What's up motocross action? I'm Josh Mosman and today we have the exciting chance to ride the new 2021 Yamaha YZ250F. In recent years, the 250 class has turned into a high revving arena where a majority of the engines have to be revved to 14,000 RPM to really get going. Yamaha is really the only manufacturer making 250Fs with low end grunt. Yeah, the Suzuki still has power down low, but it's been neglected over the last few years. Yamaha has worked hard to refine their 250F and it shows on the track with its uniquely strong low to mid power placement, throttle response, and acceleration rates. The 2019 YZ250F easily won MXA's shootout, but it didn't get any updates for 2020 and we ranked it second behind the KTM because after riding it back to back against the orange bike, our testers wanted more top end power and longer intervals between shifting points. Still, it placed second and we called it the best all around bike for novice racers because it was easier to ride fast and didn't need to be revved to the moon. Now, for 2021, Yamaha has made big changes to their YZ250F and it seems like they've been working hard. Now, for 2021, Yamaha has made big changes to their YZ250F and they've been listening to MXA as the update list shows that they're really trying to achieve more top-end power with this new model. So let's dive into the new stuff on the 2021 YZ250F. Starting in the engine, it got an all new cylinder head with an improved air intake port shape that is straighter with a 9% increase of volume just to increase airflow. However, this bigger and straighter air intake port won't help if there's restrictions in the air box, right? So to feed the intake port, there's a new air box boot shape and an air filter to match the YZ450F. It also has new air box intake ducts to continue with the same theme of increasing airflow. More air equals more power and Yamaha is doing a lot to make sure that they get more air to the engine faster. The throttle body also received a larger diameter to work with the new port shape. There's a lot of updates when it comes to air heading into the engine, but it also has updates to the other side of the bike, the exhaust. There's a new exhaust cam profile that allows the valves to open quicker and close sooner to increase power, and the muffler was lengthened 70 millimeters to improve sound and also to add more over rev power. The ECU settings have been updated to work with the new engine. The clutch has a new material on the basket to reduce stress, and the transmission has been beefed up significantly to improve durability for supercross riders who are skimming across whoops and also for the average guy. To also increase durability, the crankcase, cam chain, cam chain tensioner, along with the water pump and water temperature sensors have been refined to be more durable as well. Diving into the chassis, like the KX250 got the KX450 frame this year, the YZ250F also got the upgraded YZ450 frame that we saw on that bike back in 2020. The new frame and the bodywork on the YZ250F don't look a whole lot different to the untrained eye and the bodywork is actually the same. However, the aluminum frame does have slightly thinner lateral beams and slightly thicker engine cradle tubes to help with bump absorption and cornering performance. To work with this, the engine mounts were also adjusted and funny enough, the top mounts were changed from aluminum to steel and the front mounts were changed from steel to aluminum. To continue with the chassis updates, the top triple clamp was revised to reduce rigidity and the front axle was also increased by 1.4 millimeters to also decrease rigidity at the hands. To work with these changes, the Kiaba SSS forks and the Kiaba shock have updated settings and they're supposed to be a little bit stronger dampening force at the low to mid speed range. The front brake has been updated with a bigger piston size that's 12% larger than it was last year and the caliper also has more rigidity now as well. The front brake pads are also larger and they have a new material and the front brake rotor has a bit larger surface area as well. The rear brake got updates too and it was changed from a 245 millimeter rotor down to a 240 millimeter rotor and the caliper and hanger have also been optimized to reduce weight by one quarter of a pound. So that's all for the updates on the new model. Now let's dive into the exciting part and what you really came here for. Our first impressions after day one of riding. Daryl Eklund and myself put a lot of time on this bike. When I say a lot of time, I really mean it. We put almost three hours, just under three hours on the 2021 Yamaha YZ250F. And we also had a fresh 2020 model to compare with it, go back to back, and a few other brands to compare them as well. First lap on the track, there's two major things that stuck out to me. One, the bars. 
The handlebars are in the third position, so that means that they went from the back holes on the top triple clamp to the front holes, and also the bar mounts were turned around. So this brings the handlebars about 16 millimeters farther forward than they were last year. This is also how the YZ450F came in the 2020 and 2021 model years. Overall, the MXA Wrecking Crew, we kind of have mixed opinions on it. A lot of our guys like them in the back holes with the bar mounts pointed forward. It was definitely a big change to have them farther forward. Second update that I noticed first lap on the track was the sound. I really didn't like the Yamaha YZ250F sound that it had in 2020. It was loud and raspy and it wasn't a very pleasant sound to hear. Now the 250F still sounds like a Yamaha but it's less raspy and it's actually louder. The airbox has intake holes right in front of the gas cap and these holes make the bike a lot louder. I already knew that they would make it louder because I've ridden other Yamaha 250s with these holes so the extra holes definitely make the bike a lot louder. Besides that, the power. This this power on the new 2021 is exciting. It's got a lot of low to mid power. To me, it feels a lot like the 2020 engine, only up five or 10%. It's a lot stronger off the bottom end. And Daryl and I were going back and forth trying to figure out what we liked. We rode the 2020 model and we rode the 2021. And the 2020 was slower, but it was actually smoother and easier to ride and easier to come out of the corners where the 2021, man, the thing was so exciting. It wanted to wheelie out of the corners and we had to shift a lot to really control it. No, we couldn't ride third gear through the corners like we do on a 450. And we kind of wanted to a few times because it is so jumpy right off the crack of the throttle. But we did dive into the Power Tuner app. There's a lot of pros and cons with it. A lot of motocross guys, we're not interested in looking at our cell phone when we're at the track. We'd rather just unload our bike, hit the track and ride all day. But with the Power Tuner app that you can download on your cell phone, on your smartphone. You can Wi-Fi connect to the bike and adjust the maps from there. So the bike comes with two maps stock and the nice part is that you can adjust the maps while you're riding and I really appreciate that. Map one is where the light off and map two is when the light is on. So map one was a standard map, map two was aggressive. I liked the standard map actually and then after Daryl and I went back and forth on it, we came up with some other maps that are available on the Yamaha website. Uh, and they gave us a little more over rev and they also gave us another map that was a little more toned down and easier to ride through the corner. So with the updated engine, with more air going to the engine, the new 2021 Yamaha YZ250F is strong. By and far the most exciting 250F I've ever ridden in stock form. So with that excitement also comes a little bit of jumpiness at the crack of the throttle. Which, and it's surprising to say that on a 250 where the Kawasaki, the KTM, the Husqvarna, and the Honda, they're all top end power machines where you have to ride it at 14,000 RPM to really make power and to really get going fast. Where the Yamaha, it's down low, it's right there, and that's what makes it really exciting to ride. As for the clutch, it did get a few updates for 2021 to increase durability. Today, after day one, we didn't notice the clutch slipping on the track. We weren't having issues with that, but we were having to adjust the clutch a lot as there was a lot of free play after we were doing laps and smelling hot uh, and we believe that that was the clutch as well so we're looking forward to putting more time on this bike and really diving into the durability side and seeing how the clutch holds up let's dive into the performance that the chassis and suspension was giving us today with the new frame both daryl and i felt that it was stiffer a lot like ktm did back in 2019 when they went with a stiffer frame and they had to go with softer suspension settings to accommodate with the stiffer frame we feel like yamaha might have done something similar for this model and it felt like that on the track when we talked to yamaha they don't really say that we made this the frame more rigid or more flexible but with the changes they made we did feel like the frame was a little more rigid and also more predictable on the track riding it back to back with the 2020 the 2020 frame and suspension definitely felt like it had more flex and more give while the 2021 the updated frame felt like it was more precise and we could kind of predict where it was going even more yamaha already has this character trait where it's very predictable you know where it's going to go and we felt like that was even more so with the 2020 edition. With a more rigid frame, the suspension does have to work a little bit harder. However, we noticed that both Daryl and I never bottomed out the forks all day long. So that was impressive for us to notice. And uh, Daryl and I's settings were completely different. And normally we can find a setting that we both agree on. Today, the track was super rough out here at Glen Helen. As you'll see in the video, Daryl actually went softer than the regular stock clicker settings while I actually went stiffer. So this was unique for us. And we figured that his settings were more tailored to a vet 
an average rider that wanted a little more plush feeling while I wanted a little more hold up as I was hitting the bumps a little bit harder. With the forks, I went three clicks stiffer on compression and two clicks slower on rebound, while Daryl was actually six clicks softer on compression when compared to stock and one click slower on rebound when compared to stock. So big difference for us there. Daryl also liked the sag at 105. He liked the rear end to drop down a little bit while I was comfortable with it at 103. As far as the shock goes, we had zero complaints. The Kiaba shock was amazing for us today and we didn't make a lot of adjustments. Daryl left it with the stock settings while I went three clicks stiffer on compression and one eighth of an inch slower on rebound in the shock. Overall, we did like the front brake. No, it wasn't like the Brembo brakes that we find on the KTM, but the bigger pistons does show that Yamaha is working to make their front brake more precise and a little bit stronger coming into corners. As far as the tires go, the, the YZ250F comes with Bridgestone X20 tires. These are actually sand tires, so they have a little bit harder durometer in the rubber as the track was soft and had great traction. However, with X20 Bridgestone tires in the past, we have struggled on the hard pack sections and that's really not what they're made for anyways. And as always, today was just day one of riding on the new 2021 Yamaha YZ250F. Yes, we did put almost three hours on this bike. Yes, we did compare it with other bikes. Yes, the track was rough. However, we have a lot more time to put on this. We're gonna be breaking down durability. We're gonna be adjusting the gearing and seeing what we can do to refine that. We're gonna be playing with the Yamaha Power Tuner app to really dial in the power and get what we're looking for there. We still have a long way to go on this bike. To check out the in-depth details on the Yamaha YZ250F, you can check out a printed edition of Motocross Action Magazine at the newsstands or by subscribing to our magazine and having it mailed straight to your door. You can do that at motocrossactionmag.com. And while you're there, make sure to check out the latest news, reviews, interviews, race results, and more, because we got it all on our website, motocrossactionmag.com. And if you're on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest YouTube uploads. And also, we just tested the KTM 250 SXF and also the new KX250 from Kawasaki. We have those first ride videos available for you right here.